Hello, welcome to Nerdgoria. My name is Tyler and today I'm going to talk about Kenshi's modding tools. It's called the Forgotten Construction Set, or FCS for short. With the FCS, you can create custom starting scenarios for your playthroughs. You can also use it to just straight up cheat, which is awesome. What you do with this power is totally up to you, and I'm not judging you. <laughs> So to start the FCS from Steam, you need to select Kenshi as usual, press play. When you press play, Steam will ask if you want to launch Kenshi or the modding tools. You want to select modding tools and press play. Once open, you'll have a list of all the game mods and files active. Be sure not to uncheck the four checkboxes up top. These are pretty important as they are the main game files. From there, you're gonna press create new mod file and then name it whatever you need. Then you're gonna wanna look down and make sure no other mods are active other than the four up top and the one you just created. And then press done to continue. So you're gonna see this menu here. Um, it You can't really get rid of it. And basically what's, what's on here is just like all the different kind of files that are in the game. I wouldn't recommend messing with a lot of these unless you have the intention to um, do a lot of modding, you know? And, and if you're familiar with modding, this is probably already, you know, you're already kind of understanding what these options are for. And if you have no clue and you really don't have any interest in modding, I would just ignore these. And really what we want here is the game starts. Now with game start selected, It'll start to show you all the different game starts that are available in the game. What most people usually like to do is right click the Wanderer and duplicate it, mainly because it's easier to build an already solid foundation. And the Wanderer is as basic as it gets in this game, so it would make sense to build off of him. Now that we have our copy up, you can go ahead and just rename it. And if you look there under General on your left, you're gonna see a whole bunch of uh, descriptors. Um, these appear when you select your start at the opening screen of Kenshi. And you can also edit your starting money here as well, which is pretty neat. So once you're done adjusting your general descriptors, you'll notice below it will say position. And what position lets you do is set your starting location using the X and Z coordinates. And a lot of people usually just run a character to where you would want to have your start out and then build a uh, fire, like a, a campfire there. And then you would go shift F12, pull up the editor menu and you would click on the campfire and get the coordinates that way. I find that to be like, you know, kind of rough uh, and kind of time consuming, especially when you could just pull up the interactive map and find the coordinates that way. But however you want to do it, if you have a, a, a chungus like me, or if you just want to use a interactive map, there is no wrong answer really, as long as you're having fun, right? They also have preset destinations you can choose. All you have to do is simply click the drop menu up top here and then select town, then press add. This will bring up the select town reference of which there are many to choose from. I'm gonna add the smuggler's den because hash smuggling is tight. Now if you leave multiple preset towns in your potential town spawns, the game will start you randomly in one of them. Just to keep things simple, I'm gonna just go ahead and delete the hub. Now that that's sorted, let's look at how to customize our squad. Squad customization is probably going to be the second most complicated thing I'm willing to explain in this video. There are many facets to this, and I just plan to just do a rundown of the basics to get somebody who doesn't know much about this kind of stuff cruising. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this. I just don't like seeing the copy sign on my start off. It's just a minor pet peeve for myself. So the first step I'm gonna take is I'm gonna right click the Wanderer and just replace him with a copy of himself. This will allow me to edit most of the stuff inside the file. Now these options here on the left aren't really uh, important for what we're gonna do here. What we wanna do is right click the Wanderer and open him up. 
You're going to notice here on the right of the Wanderer copy all sorts of traits, items, and dialogue packages. This is where you do a lot of the customization for your character. The stuff here on the left has some pretty interesting stuff to it too. Like you could set your bounty if you want to start your game off with like a high bounty or uh, you could set your armor quality here as well. I do not recommend setting your stats up here because it, it's kind of in a bulk fashion and I, I rather, in my opinion, it's better to fine tune it with the stats option on the right. Which I'm going to dive into in a moment, but first I want to tackle clothing since it's right here. I'm going to start off by removing all the clothing that the Wanderer already has equipped. I don't want cloth pants or anything like that. I'm also going to go ahead and remove everything regarding his weapon and his weapon quality. Um, I'll go into that also, but first let's go ahead and focus on his armor. Now that we cleared all the clothing off, we could go up to the drop down menu here, go down to clothing add clothing and then it will you know show you all the clothing that we have available and go ahead and just pick out some stuff you want to put on your guy i think i would rather equip him with some samurai armor once we're satisfied with our look we can go up to the top menu here drop down get weapons and then we can pick what kind of weapon we want. I'm gonna pick the katana. It's gonna go with my samurai look. Now that we have our equipment chosen, we can go ahead and look over to the left here under levels, it will say armor grade. We're gonna wanna click on that and it will turn into a drop down menu giving you at least five different levels of upgrading. I'm gonna go ahead and pick master cause I'm a cheater. This will do the grading of your armor but not your weapon and so how you do weapons is you go to the drop down menu up top go to weapon level add weapon level and you're going to be given a variety of different levels of weapons um, cross is the best one so of course that's the one i'm going to pick now that we got the quality of our equipment down um, I'm going to talk about stats. Just like everything else, stats are in the drop down menu up top. Go down, grab stats, add stats, and of course it's going to give you a whole bunch of pre generated stats that you can choose. But I'm going to just pick new item and then add. Double click stats to open the editor. As you can see, all your stats are one. So just go ahead and add some zeros to things until you're happy. Ah, much better. Once we're done with that, we can go ahead and close our stats menu. Your end product should look like this. I'm sorry I did stats out of order. It, it just it just worked out that way, I'm sorry. So now that we made a literal god, we're gonna probably need some goons to boss around. This could be easily done by just going up to the drop menu, selecting squad, adding squad. When adding a squad, you're going to be given a list of a whole bunch of pre-generated characters as well as a new item. Now I'm not really in the mood to design like a whole bunch of new characters. So I'm just going to go ahead and use some pre-generated empire mercenaries. The first number next to the mercenary's name is uh, the amount of mercenaries. So I'm probably just gonna put two because getting a lot of characters is overwhelming and I don't wanna spend much of my $10 million on, you know, just feeding these guys, jeez. Now that I'm pleased with my setup, I'm gonna go ahead and X out of everything. But before I do, you're gonna wanna make sure and save your work. It's on the top left corner, the little blue save file. Let's push it and validate ourselves. Good job, good job. Now that our work is safe, we can exit out of our modding. And now, let's find out and see if it worked. All right, now that we have Kenchi up, we're just gonna create a new game. Look for our game start we made. Oh yeah, there it is. All the monies. And 
let's go ahead and start. Looks like all of our characters are here and present. And all right, let's 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 go check out the gear in, in game. And right away, we see that we spawned right by the smuggler's den. Now we're going to go ahead and check our inventory. Oh yeah, look at that. Me too. Look at that. Mm-hmm, master. Mm-hmm. That's what we like to see. And now let's check out our stats. All right. All 100s. 120 when I can. Um... So now, what you're going to want to do is not be like me and actually save this game so that we can go ahead and transplant the squad into a already existing game file. Before we get around to transplanting our squad, we're going to want to make sure that there's an empty squad inside of the save file that we're going to be transplanting to. Now, all you have to do is take all the characters out of that squad that you want to save over with your new squad. And then you're going to want to save and then exit Kimchi. You want to make sure all those characters are out though because we're going to save over it and anything that's in that squad is going to be deleted. So I would also, you know, recommend maybe even making an extra save file just in case you accidentally save over the wrong squad. We don't want to do that. But it, it could easily be worked around if we just make an extra save. So from here, we're gonna wanna navigate to our local Kenchi save files. They're gonna be in your app data folder. And then from there, you wanna navigate to your saves. And then you go to the squad that you're going to be transplanting with. In my case, it's going to be custom start. And then I'm going to look for nameless platoon zero. We're just going to right click, copy him, and then we're going to go down to squad transfer, which is the name I gave the save that I'm going to be um, transplanting to. Open up squad transfer. Look for Tegrity Farms, because that's the name of my faction. <laughs> And yes, so, and if you're ever confused onto which one might not have all of your units in it, a good rule of thumb is that a squad with no units in it will have one kilobyte of data. So that's a sure way to find out what it is. So before we complete our squad transfer, we're gonna wanna back out of this file and we're gonna wanna paste our file that we copied, Nameless Squad Zero, inside somewhere neutral that's not going to save over anything important. And then we're going to want to dive back into our transplant file, find the squad we want to save over. We're going to copy its name outright. And then we're going to back back out. And then we're going to paste it onto our Nameless Squad Zero. And then we're going to drag and drop the squad into the platoon and save over the file. There we go, transplant complete. So now we're just gonna go around, load up Kenchi and see how our work turned out. <clears throat> okay, animals safe. Ah, there we are. Here's my guys, right where I left them. So there you go, that's, that's how you basically use the FCS for some startup and customization of your gameplay. Um, and this is also how you transfer characters and platoons into already established save files. And thank you, I guess. <laughs> For sticking with me all the way to the end I super appreciate it and I hope this was uh, enlightening and helped you out in some way 
And please uh, let me know in the comments if I missed anything or if I got anything wrong. Because sometimes that happens. And, uh, you know, you all have a great day. Bye.